the air starts to go up your nose. Pew, oh, that just drives you nuts. Good morning, Modern Steaders. In this week's homesteading tool must have review, we're going to be talking about framing guns and siding guns. In last week's video, I talked about air compressors, air brad guns, finish nailers, and air staplers. If you didn't see that video, I'll put a link to that video right here. While we're right here, I've been getting a lot of questions and emails about what are these? These are white birch small trees that we had to cut down because they were overgrown and taken over the property. And we cut them down, let them dry out for six months to a year. And we made some inside curtain rods. And these were the curtain rod holders. There were some extra ones I had made up. I just think they're kind of neat looking. So I haven't thrown them away or put them in the wood stove yet. All right, let's get back on topic now. Dive into our air nailer. It's a DeWalt air nail gun. This nail gun right here is my newest nail gun. I've had the other nail guns, including the framing gun, I want to say since like 03. This one I bought in 2015 when we built our house. All the inside of the house is knotty pine, tongue and groove, and the outside is a reverse board and batten pine. So I I was gonna hand nail everything. I said, no way. So we bought this air nail gun for doing siding. It's kind of like a roofing gun, but the angle's different and it takes different nails. So it's a coiled nail gun, which when we get to our frame gun, you'll see the difference. But the nails come in coils. We have galvanized nails. You can get them stainless steel and not galvanized. You at least want to get galvanized. If you're going to be using them on the outside siding, you're most likely going to want stainless steel. But we won't talk too much about nails today. But I will say, on the shanks right here, whether you're doing on a framing gun or a siding gun, you can get ring shanked or smooth. These are ring shanked, it makes them harder to pull out, which you're gonna want that on most of your nails, except for maybe a framing nail. This is a siding gun, it's a 15 degree bevel. So that's talking about the angle of the nail. You can see the, it's a slight angle. So that's a 15 degree angle on the nail. And this will take a nail as small as inch and a quarter up to two and a half inches long. Watch that. These ones are two and a half inches long. The nice thing about this nail gun is it's easy to make an adjustment when you're putting your nails in. So we have a two and a half inch nail, so the plate's all the way down. If you want to put a smaller nail in, you pull up your disc right here and you would twist it and it locks it in place. And that's for an inch and three quarter long nail. Pull it up further, click it, and now you can do inch and a quarter, inch and a half nails. Alright, since we're comparing the two nail guns side by side, or talking about them in the same video, let's talk about the nails a little bit, because there's a big difference of why you need different guns also. These are framing nails, so they're a lot, the wire diameter is a lot bigger versus a siding gun. Now you can get smaller nails like this right here for a framing gun. These are ring shank. These are the small ones but they're also smooth where your framing nails are smooth. So if you're building a project, like when they're building pallets, they use ring shanks, so they're just harder to pull out. Depending on what you're doing, you're going to need different nails. The coil nails are nice because you can have more of them, so if you're doing siding or boards, you're holding a lot more. Because if you're doing boards with a stick nailer, your stick nail gun only holds two. So you're going to go through your nails a lot quicker. But the biggest reason you want to have a siding gun is when it shoots the nail out, 
you have a nice per smooth protector here so you're not making any marks into the boards. I'll bring you upstairs in a little bit and I'll show you the different marks that a siding gun makes versus a framing gun. This is going to give you a lot nicer of a finish where a framing gun is rough and it's going to leave some big bites and marks which you need it for framing. So there's different tools for different jobs. Framing gun is going to leave the star marks like that on your boards. But one of the reasons you need to have those teeth is when you're toenailing stuff in on an angle, you want to make sure you have a good bite. But when you're driving in siding nails, you're not going to have any of those marks. And you don't want that on your pine boards. We'll load the nails in and then I'll show you a few other features of the siding gun. So you're going to take your nails, put them in, pull your nails out, lie them in place. The disc cover closes first and the top latch, you're going to pull it right here and that little nub right here locks in place to close the door and keep it shut. This also has a little groove in it to hold the nails and help pull them forward. What we have right here is a bump trigger. If you hold your trigger down and you just bump this, you're going to rapid fire a nail out. Right here, can you see the grooved piece? So that spins and that allows more airflow or less airflow and that sets the depth of your nail head for how deep it's going to go into the board. So most nail guns, especially the siding guns, are going to have that feature. Another nice thing are the newer nail guns. They're plastic and made out of a lighter weight metal. A lot of people don't like plastic, but when you're using a nail gun all day long above your head, five pounds lighter is a huge difference. I bring my nail gun in when I'm doing siding jobs, whether who I'm working with has one or not, because if they have an older one, it's an all aluminum or some kind of metal casing and they weigh a lot more. So if I have the opportunity, I'm going to use my own nail gun because it's lighter. This siding gun has a few extra features than some of the older ones do, which I find very convenient. This first one is this loop right here. It swivels and spins. And what you can do with this is you can hang it in your pocket. If you're climbing a ladder, you can hang it on the side of your ladder. You can hang it on the top of your ladder so you can have a hand free while you're putting a board up. This has saved my bacon so many times instead of having to put the gun down on the floor and then have to bend over and pick it back up. I can have it in my pocket or I can have it on a board and it's just so convenient. The other nice thing a lot of the older nail guns don't have is this back right here is the air deflector. This is when you shoot your nail gun. After you shoot your nail, you're going to have and you're going to have air pressure come out. Well, on the back here is where the vent is. The older nail guns are stationary. The newer ones, you can swivel, which you might not think you would need to do. But if you're working under it, and this is right in your face, you get a shot right in your face, your eye, where it really hurts. I don't know how it happens, but if you're shooting one and it, the air starts to go up your nose, pew, oh! That just drives you nuts. The older nail guns, you can't move that. So having a swivel vent is very convenient. I really like that. <clears throat> the hook, that was a smart feature. And I would almost have to think it was somebody who was in the trades either told DeWalt about it or somebody who used to be in the trades is working with DeWalt. I don't know, but they did a great job there with the hook. Before we put the siding gun away, Let's compare it to the framing gun. Some different features that they have. So the biggest differences on a siding gun and a framing gun that I found, I'm not a professional here, I don't know all the differences, I just know what we've used them for and what's worked for us and why I like them. So the biggest differences is you could use your framing gun for putting your siding up but it's gonna leave a nasty mark. Ready? Look at those teeth. So every time you bump this down, I'm not gonna do it on my hand because it would hurt, you're pushing into the wood and leaving these teeth and marring it up, which is fine when you're framing up a rough wall. You wanna be able to slam it in there and know, especially if you're on a ladder framing, 
that that's biting and it's not going to move on you when you're driving a huge nail into the wood. So where the siding gun doesn't leave any marks. So that's why you want this when you're putting siding on. That's the big difference there and it holds more nails. So if you're putting wood siding on, the siding gun is the way to go. I want to say this one was around 300 bucks. Don't hold me to it, but I'll put it in our Amazon store and I'll have a link in the description down below for our Amazon store and we'll have all of the tools that we've been talking about down there. Now this is our siding gun. It's a quarter cable. We've had this between 12 and 15 years. We've done a lot of remodeling with it. We built our house here with it. We built New York City with it. We used it to build the outdoor kitchen. Countless things. This thing's coming very handy. Um, I love the gun. Like I said, it has its limits being a framing gun, but when you need it, you need it. These nails are going to be for framing up, the bigger ones. Your 2x4s, your 2x6s. This is, these are sheathing nails, whether you're using boards, if you're using like rough sawn boards for board and batten, for, or instead of plywood, if you're using plywood, an OSB, I don't want to call it all plywood, might have some unsubscribers out there. So these are your sheathing nails, and these are your framing nails. This is the, a stick nailer, so your nails slide up and you can put two in at a time to unload it. There's a little knob right there. If you push that pull down, push the knob, it lets the nails slide past it, and then this can ride up. You get a little doodad right here. Push that in. It lets the nails slide out, and that's how you would unload it. So if you want, when you're ready to load it, you need to make sure you have your nails going in the right direction. Gonna load it up. You just get it past the metal tab and then they can come back down and rest on it. You're going to pull your sleeve down. It's going to go past all the nails. Locked and loaded. You can constantly, depending on how you have your trigger set, if you have it set the way I have it, I'll show you. Every time you pull this in, it's going to fire another nail. You can change your trigger. Most newer guns have this now, so you can change mine. I would push this red tab up spin it and it'll only let me shoot one nail at a time now if I pull my trigger and then hit this nothing's gonna happen it's locked what I'd have to do is I gotta push down first and then pull my trigger and it would shoot one nail and one nail only until I picked it up pushed it back in and pulled my trigger this nail gun doesn't have a hook on it so you can hang it anywhere but it does have the vent that you can change the direct, direction of and it locks in place, which again is very nice and convenient to have. A little bit of maintenance on any air tools, whether it's a nail gun, a grinder, a sander, is you're supposed to oil them after every use. I'm not good with that, but you should. So if you remember, put a little bit of oil, there's air tool oil that they make, most air tools nowadays come with it. A little container like this, you can buy a container this size or bigger and keep it with your air tools. If you don't do it every time, your tools aren't gonna break. But it'll extend the life of your tools. The more oil you keep in it, the longer your tools will last for you. And what you do is you're gonna put a little bit of oil right inside where your air line connects. A couple of drops in there. What I like to do is pull my trigger and it lets it go inside a little bit better. I don't always put my oil in. We were asked last time, what would be your number one nail gun to buy? The first air guns we had, we got the bundle. It was the air compressor, a brad gun, and a finish gun. I have them on our Amazon page, I believe. You can get the three of those for $249, which isn't a bad deal. And at the same time, we bought the Porta Cable framing gun. That's what I would go for if you can afford it. Um, my number one nail gun that I've used the most would be our framing gun. I hope you were able to get something out of that video. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments down below. If you have any questions on any other tools you'd like us to do a tool topic video on, leave it in the comments down below. 
Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.